Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE, covering Oracle Open World 2016. Brought to you by Oracle. Now, here's your host, John Furrier and Peter Burris. Hey, welcome back everyone. We are live here in San Francisco for Oracle Open World 2016's SiliconANGLE Media's The Cube. Our flagship program, we go out to the events and instruct the signal from those. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Peter Burris. I have two great guests here from Accenture, Pat Sullivan, Global Oracle Technology Lead, and Terry Strauss, Managing Director, Global Oracle Practice Lead for Accenture. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Thanks, John. So, Terry, tell us the big announcement today. Not off the reservation, it's kind of predicted, you can connect the dots, the business practice of the Oracle Business Group for Accenture mm -hmm. is now taking on the infrastructure service. It's a serious validation now, because it's kind of the final piece of the puzzle for Oracle. Absolutely. You had Slash, you had Pass. Yes. Looking good off the tee so far, middle of the fairway, as they say. But now, <laughs> people were questioning the infrastructure as a service. Yes. And now you think it's ready? Tell us the I, I think it's ready. Well, we're very excited uh, about uh, you know, Oracle's announcement, and it's particularly about their managed service uh, program at the MSB. Uh, and what we announced today is that we are the first uh, global systems integrator to be part of that program. Uh, and we uh, have also announced that we're adding uh, infrastructure as a service to our Accenture Oracle Business Group, which is a strategic go-to-market with Oracle, all about accelerating our clients to the cloud uh, faster at less risk. So it's not new. Take a minute to explain when was it founded and what, what does it entail specifically? What's the charter? It was not new this year. No, it's definitely not new. Take a minute to explain that. Yeah, exactly. The Accenture Oracle Business Group was actually launched uh, April of 2015. And it was launched, again, as a strategic go-to-market with Oracle, committed investments and resources, all about what our clients wanted, which was acceleration to the cloud, lower risk, and again, very fast. Uh, so that was, again, uh, 2015 in April, uh, but it was launched with just SaaS and PaaS. So what we're really happy about is we could extend AOBG, which we affectionately, affectionately call the Accenture Oracle Business Group. Uh, we now can uh, add infrastructure as a service to that offering. And the acceleration with customers, what's the uptake? What's the vibe, feedback? I'm sure you beta tested this and got some <laughs> A-B testing going on. You guys are Accenture, I'm sure there's like analytics behind it. What's the, what's the results of the, uh, before the announcement? What, what made you go here? Well, sure, first off, the Accenture Oracle Business Group has been pretty successful in its inaugural year. So we've added 70 clients across the globe to this new uh, partnership with Oracle, all cloud-based, which is great. And so with infrastructure as a service, you bet, we, we did take a look at it pretty deeply and test it out, and we were very impressed with the performance, the price for performance, as well as the speed that it came with. So that we're building into our portfolio now and, and building some solutions around it. The infrastructure service, we had a little debate earlier, Juan was just on talking about the database piece, other, but others like Chuck Hollis was on earlier. Some analysts say, oh, it was a reboot of infrastructure service. Some would say, no, it's in realignment with the bare metal. So there's a lot of moving parts when you start to get into the enterprise. I mean, public cloud is pretty straightforward. You know, rack and stack and some, some cloud somewhere and you just provision stuff, make it elastic. But in the enterprise, what was the, what was the, the key thing that Oracle had to do to get this milestone completed? Was it the bare metal component? What was specifically about it now that made you guys go, okay, we're ready to bring it to the Accenture fold and take it to market? I, th I think if you look at it, John, just in terms of data, there's Oracle owns more of the world's data running on their databases. And just from that piece alone, the question we were looking at is, did, did we think Oracle would make their cloud to run their database the best? And they did. So when you look at it from that segment and how their database You mean performs, their hardware was up to snuff, they had the right stuff, absolutely. performance was good. Mm -hmm. It took a lot of what they did in Exadata and are now applying that to their infrastructure and compute cloud. Historically, Accenture has gone to a client, helped them pick the application, and then implemented the application on premise. So is this, in many respects, about going to the client, helping them pick the application, but then giving them the option of whether or not they want to do it on premise and in the cloud? Is Absolutely. that a big well, part of well, it? Frankly, we, we take a cloud first uh, mentality okay. uh, to our clients. We feel that you know that going to the cloud provides uh, you know both the uh, price uh, 
you know, that they're looking for in many ways, as, as well as the functionality. Um, and so we go with the cloud-first mentality. Now, many of our clients also, they're not, they may not be ready, um, so we will, you know, help them to, to get to the, the, I guess, the landing spot that they, they feel most comfortable with. But we lead with cloud. But these are very, these are still very, very complex applications. When I think a lot of people forget sometimes, they associate the cloud with simple. And it's not that we can't make the applications more simple, but really you're still bringing the domain and application expertise Absolutely. to bear Absolutely. whatever the implementation style. Are you also then looking at how clients that have historically been on premise can start moving their stuff mm -hmm. to the clouds with you and modernize along the way? Is I was going to say, the, the key word is modernize as opposed to lift and shift. So as you move to the cloud, what can you do to, to improve your enterprise, you know, to, to uh, automate more um, and, and actually, like I said, you know, um, rationalize, modernize your applications as you move them. I think modernize is the right word. So John's been asking virtually everybody that's come on a really excellent question, namely, is Oracle going to take a sweet mentality and close it down, or is Oracle going to take some other type of mentality, APIs, and allow the ecosystem to continue to add value? From Accenture's standpoint, how do you think clients are looking at the modernization problem? Are they moving with new technologies and hoping that it stays available, or a lot of partners can add value to it, or are you thinking you're seeing them looking to simplify and start to close it down a little bit? Well, that's why we launched the business group in the first place. It's because we wanted to give our clients the choice, but most importantly, we knew that we had to help our clients create the industry solutions that they need that's not available from the cloud. So the ability for us to actually purpose build those and then repeat those across the industry to other like clients, I think that's the key in terms of the, the choice that's available and what we can do. So with you're it. a risk factor, but also you're also, I, mean, I used the word major D before we came on, but in reality, they want someone to walk them down the path, if you will, because I think there's still some unknown questions, right? It, am I getting that right? I don't want to oversimplify it, but mm -hmm. if I'm a big enterprise, I don't want to shoot myself in the foot by overplaying my hand or mm -hmm. getting over ahead of my skis or whatever right. metaphor we use. I mean, is that consistent I mean, with what you're seeing? I, absolutely, and I think the part of, of the service we provide that Accenture can provide is really providing that journey, that roadmap to the cloud. What do you do first, what do you do second? It is complex, you know, and actually, you know, I think as, as a center, we, we uh, flourish where there's complexity, right? Because we help our clients sort of simplify all that, that complexity and help them, you know, march forward again, in this case, to the cloud, and do things in the right order, in the right way. I want to get your thoughts, as Peter made an observation on our opening segment today, um, you know, the acceleration with cloud native, certainly we had an Asia Pacific uh, panel earlier on, mm -hmm. and mobile, especially mobile and cloud native, this really is no complex uh, bare metal environment, in, in mostly in China and other areas. But it put the pressure on the, the speed of the customer themselves, not so much the vendors and the suppliers in the space who may have great technology now, it really comes back down to the customer ability to move, mm -hmm. culturally and or just inertia. Absolutely. Can you add some color around that? Because it's a little nuanced conversation, but it speaks to kind of the self-assessment of the customer, CXO or whoever, and saying, are we ready? Can you share any insight and color around that dynamic? Do I take that one or? Yeah, or am I, sure. Is that so, true? I mean, yeah. it, it, it is true, and there's, uh, there, there's a lot of things that go into it, right? So there's still a lot of requirements that our clients have, whether that be around security or we talk about data sovereignty and things like it. But the adoption piece is big as well. So there's a starting point. What our interest is, is working with the clients to figure out where that starting point is. But I, I think the big thing that we've been doing a lot of is assessing how ready are you to move to the cloud? What do you have today? And is that available in the cloud? Yeah. So you have to answer those questions first before you can have that comfort to start to move. So you got 70 customers, I saw the press release, about 70 yeah. customers in your, in your inaugural year. Is that customers overall, or is that Oracle customers? That's Oracle. Those are Oracle customers it's Oracle that, that are taking Network. advantage of the Accenture Oracle business group. So migrating their, their legacy applications to one or more of Oracle's cloud applications. How would you put the buckets uh, buckets of distribution of kinds of apps in those 70 customers? Tire kicking, full deployments, rollouts, uh, shift over? Be, definitely beyond tire kicking. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'd say you know maybe half are single pillar and the other half you know, our multiple pillar, you know, either HCM and ERP, ERP and CX, so multiples, with, and, and a large number of those also include the past components as well. Fortune 500, 10 billion in size kind of companies? 
that's our, our, our typical target base within Accenture, but also, you know, you know I'd say upper mid to, to the certainly the enterprise level. Absolutely. That's so sizable. So we were heard earlier that Orbis got uh, 430,000 clients, 15 million users mm -hmm. for at least one of the. They have 52,000 Oracle certified, I think. 52,000 Oracle right, right uh, practitioners, right. Um, and another 20,000 Java practitioners as well. How many Javas? About 20,000. 20, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> pretty much everybody. But seven, hey, I heard JSON and Java is pretty hot, huh? But seven, <laughs> 70, 70, 70 clients. That can probably that's pretty close to representing uh, maybe three to six percent of the big, big, big Oracle shops out there. That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, we're very I've, pleased. Very I've been pleased. trying to understand the Oracle Partner Network because it's been always a moving train because it's so big and it has a lot of things. But one of the things that we've been seeing with the Partner Network is on the global partners, mm -hmm. you start to see these swim lanes develop within, you know, Censure, Deloitte, your, you know, competition. What's the one thing that a Censure does well? That, that's unique now, because I'm not trying to pit you against competition, but you're starting to see the huge, it's so much beachhead, there's plenty of fruit for everyone out in those trees and this cloud land out there. So it, it doesn't seem as competitive as it used to be. Mm -hmm. You know, you got PwC does their thing, kind of back to the old days, you know? <laughs> like, is there a specialism that you guys see developing a center that's unique, that makes you different than everybody else? Absolutely, right? <laughs> and so, no. Oh, yeah, I was going to say. No, no, we yeah. just one. <laughs> really, I'm going to give you a list, and then no, it'll yeah, probably add yeah, to but it. Each one. Well, Deloitte will say they they do this better than you. I'm looking for the one thing that makes you different. Well, I don't know that there's one. There isn't one. But at Accenture, we, first of all, our client's always first, right? So whatever, what, what our client values, so client number one, but we lead through our industries, right? So our industry acumen, you know, which I, we believe our clients desperately want from their systems integrator. And then we couple it with, I believe, our deep, the deepest technology capabilities, in this case, Oracle's cloud, uh, and, and the two combined. Uh, additionally, we have uh, a very large uh, delivery engine, our offshore uh, uh, organization, you know, so that we can, uh, which, which actually does much of our innovation for us, so that we could take that delivery engine, combine it with the likes of AOBG and our industry skills, and deliver to our clients, again, lower risk, and with acceleration, and with that automation and innovation that they're looking for. Pat, what didn't I say? Well, I, I would kind of summarize a lot of it and say our, our product at Accenture is our people and we take great pride in bringing the best people that we can in this space, and, and we've been doing that pretty well. And so as Oracle continues to evolve and move to the cloud, we're bringing the best people, or training our people to make sure that we can answer the market. It's very customer focused too, I noticed. I mean, I would yeah. say well, that you very customer, and you have the biggest parties, that's for sure. <laughs> I, all the events I go to, we go to all the events. Century has always just- And the, we have the best. You always have the best parties. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's kind of one benchmark, I'd say, yeah, not something you put on the literature, but. To the list, I guess. All right, so how would you sum up Oracle Open World so far this year for folks who couldn't make it, who are watching the live stream? What's the vibe, what's the big news here? Well, to me, the big news is that they've rounded out their cloud yeah. with infrastructure, the service. I couldn't be more excited, uh, not just for my business, but for what now we can bring to our clients. And what you can support now, too, the support side. Absolutely right, and, and absolutely. Guys, thanks so much for taking the time to share uh, the announcement the news. Congratulations. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing it at the big uh, Accenture parties maybe later tonight or <laughs> next event. Absolutely. Sounds good. See absolutely. you at the Partner Network at Conference. Thanks for sharing. This is the Cube here live in San Francisco inside the show floor. Big booth, the Cube. We'll be right back.